There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a and gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and visible chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome to the video for the scientific terms of the nuclear chemistry chapter. Now in this video we're going to cover all scientific terms which are mentioned in this chapter and which also are on all the syllabus dot points. It's important to know these scientific terms because they could either be mentioned in the HSC exam questions or they should be used in your short answer questions for the HSC exam. It's good to know all of these questions or all of these scientific terms. The first one I'm going to go over is an isotope. An isotope is a version of an element with a different number of neutrons. So for example, here we've got two different ones. This is carbon-12 and this is carbon-13. Now we know it's carbon because it has six protons, that makes it a carbon. Whereas it has different numbers of neutrons. One has seven, the other one has six. So these are both isotopes of the same element carbon. Radio radioactive isotope or a radioisotope means it has a too high or low ratio of protons to neutrons. And remember, anything which has the atomic number of less than 20 should have a ratio of 1 to 1. Anything above it should have a ratio of 1 proton to 1.5 neutrons. And if it's too big, if it has an atomic number of greater than 83, then it's always unstable. The radioactive isotopes are which are unstable. We've got a nucleus, which is the center of an atom. So this nucleus has our, both our protons and our neutrons in it, which is this right here. Atomic number is, or number, or Z for short, is number of protons. So the atomic number will be six for these ones up here. And that makes it um, carbon as the element. Atomic mass is number of protons plus neutrons. So if we add those two together, six plus six is 12. That's why it's called carbon 12. Six plus seven is 13. That's why it's called carbon 13. Gamma ray, that's a type of radiation decay, which releases energy. So just release of energy. Alpha radiation has a type of radiation that releases a helium nucleus. So that's four, um, mass of four, two protons, two neutrons in that nucleus. Beta radiation, that's when we change one neutron into a proton. And also, we also release an electron in the process as well. Radiation, that just accompanies the decay of radioisotopes because radioisotopes are radioactive, which means over time they're going to be decaying into something which is a normal isotope again. That's radiation. Radiation happens as a byproduct of that decay. The Geiger meter, the, the counter, that was a radiation detection device which was done for the ionization of argon. And because the ionization of argon created an electrical circuit, that caused a clicking sound. And that's how we know if uh, radiation was close by. Film badge, that helped us detect beta and gamma radiation. And that was done because it would absorb radiation and change color. So people who were on radiation would be able to tell for that change in color. Cloud chamber that detected alpha radiation. We had neutron bombardment, which was a high speed neutron, which usually hits a target. And that target becomes something else. It changes its actual uh, elemental number or atomic mass number. and becomes a new or different type of isotope. Alpha bombardment was a high speed helium nuclei, so alpha particle, which bumps into an ion and changes the actual ion. Ion par or particle accelerator, that was a cause of collision of two ions. So this could be, for example, nickel and bismuth fitting together. And they almost hit together at the speed of light. And that speed of light was achieved through both the combination of electrical fields and magnetic fields. And that was a huge, like the ion and particle accelerators are huge um, buildings or projects. Transuranic elements, these were elements with a atomic number of greater than 92. So greater than uranium, and they're all artificial, which means they're man-made. We have cobalt-60, which was a radioisotope, which was used to detect flaws in metal objects. Um, Technetium-99, that was a radioisotope, which was used to detect disease in organs. And so one was used in medicine, the other one was used in industry. Half-time. That was the time it takes for half the molecules of a radioisotope to have decayed. So for example, if we have 100 carbon molecules and the half time is two years, that means in two years from those 100 molecules, 50 have decayed and changed into a different um, isotope or in a different element. So that's the time it takes for half the molecules to have decayed. Industry, which is an area that's responsible for the manufacture and trade. And medicine is an area responsible for health and disease. So I hope that was useful.
Thank you for watching.